So it's been scientifically, psychologically, and medically proven that role-playing games like World of Warcraft are highly addictive. But could these games be more like a religion than a video game, with faithful followers and even martyrs? Find out in this clip from the documentary Controller Part 2, Hitting Characters. But first, I want to give a shout out to Greg from Bible Flock Box. If you haven't checked out his channel, go do it now, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get notified because this guy's got awesome videos that tie current events with Bible prophecy, and he's got an amazing testimony. This guy was locked up for nine years in prison, but he should have been in there for 20. He was a drug dealer, and by a miracle, God gave him favor with the authorities. And while in prison, he found God, and now he's using YouTube as a platform to spread the gospel to the world. So go check him out and tell him that Little Light Studios sent you. And now, roll the clip. The interactive entertainment industry has steadily increased in popularity worldwide since its inception in the mid 20th century. This is so much so, in fact, that in 2008, the video game industry actually surpassed Hollywood in terms of worldwide revenue from sales. But as the industry has grown, so has the diversity of content in games grown to even include an unlikely topic. Religion. Shred the riffs, thump the bass, and blast that solid Christian rock. Guitar Praise includes over 50 tracks from top Christian artists, including Toby Mac, Stellar Cart, Skillet, Casting Crowns, Hawk Nelson, Family Force 5, Newsboys, and more. So the idea is that they want to use a popular medium to relate a perceivedly positive message, but it seems like some of the ideas get a little lost in translation. It was only when various shards of God's wisdom were stolen that Semyaza's betrayal was uncovered. But by then, he, together with the Grigori he led, had already fled. To bring order once more, the Council of Elders ruled humanity must be purified by a second great flood. But one man found favor in the Lord's eyes, and unto him an alternative was granted. For the Lord said, Bring me the souls of the fallen angels, and I shall spare the world. Return the fallen angels to heaven? Why would anybody want to do that? But aside from just entertainment, is there a serious agenda to communicate religion through video games? Just pick one, okay? I'm gonna pick this guy right here. He's an individual, and you can actually see that here, and pick out his life story. So you'll see people uh, that get torn away and come back if you can recruit them back. So it's a, it's a whole spiritual tug of war. You see that the Antichrist forces are gonna take care of me one way or the other. They wanna take care of my guys. Now Vince just bought the farm. I will not be able to use him as a, as a unit ever again. He's gone. I don't want my units to go away like that. Okay, I'm going to get my musicians. Okay, there you go. See, look at that. All those guys that were hostile to me and were going to be fighting back against me just went neutral. I just took care of all those guys and I didn't fire a shot. I think it could be for that generation of young people that are into video games the number one most powerful vehicle to their hearts and minds that's been invented in our lifetime. Now that's a very intriguing statement because we usually think of video games as the medium by which the user manipulates the virtual world. But what he just said implies that video games are the most powerful means of manipulating the user. Could this actually be true? We've already seen the religious involved in the creation of new video games but can video games be involved in the creation of new religions? Merriam-Webster's online dictionary defines religious as relating to or manifesting faithful devotion to an acknowledged ultimate reality or deity. Now do we see that with some of the games already out? They don't realize how addictive it can be. It's a world of fantasy and fun. But for 16-year-old Cameron Sandler, this is more than a game. It's an addiction and an illness. I am addicted to the game, but I'm not fully addicted. Like, I can quit whenever I want. This really kicks doesn't it? It all started 18 months ago when Cameron discovered World of Warcraft. Oh, now I'm going to kill you all. This never-ending computer game is played by millions around the globe. From America, Germany, China, all of Europe, 
England. And you've got friends in all of these places? Yeah. And that's what you refer to them as, your friends? Yeah. They play simultaneously for hours on end. Well, when you're ready. Fighting and killing their enemies. I don't, I don't know why, I just eventually got addicted to it. Cameron has up to 500 players on his team, known as a guild. But the longest I've ever played it for was 12 hours, and that was, um... Oh, that was um, just because the guild wanted me on for that long. Oh, you took my kill. Why do you talk with an American accent when you're talking to these people? I don't know. It's probably like you move to a new country or something. You just end up picking it up. And that's not all he picked up. For sake. There's the tension and the violence. We get keyboards thrown around the room or holes punched in the wall or they'll go outside and smash bottles. Denise is Cameron's mum. He started off with this going for an hour, two hours, two hours turned into four, four turned into six, six turns into 12, and he's now into the snowball effect that he's got to play that game. Cameron is often up at four in the morning to begin playing. Sometimes he goes right through the night. His mum estimates that on average, he's in front of that screen 16 hours a day. My choice to play it, um, my choice to be addicted to it. Cameron reckons he can stand up and walk away whenever he wants, but try telling that to his mum. Denise believes he's hooked, and just like an alcoholic, a smoker or a drug addict, getting off, beating the habit, is going to be an enormous challenge. Regardless of who's right and wrong in this household, experts are now warning that addiction to technology is becoming the fastest growing illness of the 21st century. No, his situation isn't rare at all. In fact, he's just the tip of probably a very undisclosed iceberg. Psychologist Edwina Cowdery and her colleagues are seeing more and more cases every day. The DSM-4, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, basically it's the psychologist's bible of all the things that we're meant to know about, it doesn't have internet addiction in it. I would suspect the next one does because of the amount of internet addiction in various forms for various ages that we're starting to see. Do you regret discovering this game? Mm, kind of taken a lot of time away from me. Um, I could have made up, you know, going out, exploring some more, meeting new people, but other than that, no, because I've gone and explored inside the game. I've met new people inside the game. Warcraft has had such an impact on players, there are chat rooms on the internet dedicated to addicts. An assistant professor from Harvard University claims up to 40% of users are hooked. And in China, a gifted 13-year-old student killed himself after playing Warcraft for 36 hours straight. The boy left a suicide note saying he wanted to join the heroes of the game he worshipped. It's a fantasy world. A bit like a book, but a book ends. I don't want to live like this anymore. I really don't. You right? <sighs> Do you think people find it hard to believe the impact? I think so. I think so. I, I didn't think that a game would be this addictive to, to this point and change of personality. Cameron has left school and at the moment he isn't studying or working. He knows now is the time to tackle his addiction. It's no longer a game. How many parents do you think will be watching this story tonight and saying, that's me? I would say a lot. This is going to be a problem that we're going to be hearing a lot more about. Oh yes. Oh, yes, big time. Now, what's extremely fascinating about the game World of Warcraft in particular is the fact that it has all the trimmings of a modern-day church. At church, you're introduced to a universe of good and evil that most people aren't aware of, just as it is in the World of Warcraft. At church, you agree to follow a new behavioral code when you join, just as you do in the World of Warcraft. At church, your actions build character for the future, as they do in the world of Warcraft. 
At church, you learn to lay up treasures in an unseen place, just as you do in the world of Warcraft. At church, you get names that people don't call you anywhere else, just as you do in the world of Warcraft. At church, your continued financial support is expected, just as it is in the world of Warcraft. At church, weddings happen every so often, as they do in the world of Warcraft. And at church, you spend an average of about one day a week there, just as they do in the world of Warcraft. And if only the similes ended there, it would be enough. But for most causes that you find people fighting for, you'll also find those who think it's worth dying for. Martyrs. And to date, there have been 10 separate World of Warcraft related deaths. Now one might intelligently ask the question, why would this be? Are you suggesting that the makers of World of Warcraft are trying to create a new religion? To which we would honestly say we can't conclude. But, the word of God does indeed warn us of someone who is. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now since he's trying to deceive the entire world, both religious and unreligious alike, could it be possible that the ideas of some games are actually a vehicle for leading people to an unbiblical form of religion? Hey YouTubers, I hope you enjoyed that video clip. It came from one of these three documentaries. We got three on this subject. They're called Controller and you can buy them at littlelightstudios.tv or you can rent them on vimeo.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell to keep being notified about new videos we come out with and also if you want to support our ministry click the patreon page and don't forget we got plenty more videos over here see you next time guys